Hello, and we're here back in the Frank Nutt Sewing Machine shop here in Birmingham, and uh, you are watching our YouTube channel. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, today we're going to take a look at the Burnett B33, a mechanical model, um, kind of at the beginning end of the market, but it's a really super little machine. So we're going to get it out of the box and have a run through of all the accessories and uh, kind of show off what it can do, because it can do quite a lot for a little machine. So um, I'm just going to open this. It's a bit of a weird way the polystyrene goes in, so we may fast forward this bit, but let's see what happens. Okay, so it kind of comes sandwiched in. And then we've got our foot control. And then on the other side, our manual. And if we gently open it out, we have the machine. So let's kind of prize out. There we are. So as you can see, it's a fairly lightweight model. It's not that hard to handle around and carry. Let's move these out of the way. I'll bring our manual with us. I'll leave that foot control wrapped up because we've actually got one set up here. Plug that in. So fresh out of the box, we've got a certificate of guarantee in here, as well as a nice printed manual to get you going. Everything you need to kind of get started is, is included with the machine and they're normally hidden in the front here. Yes, they are. All the accessories here. So this particular model features a good range of kind of beginner stitches as well as um, a four-step buttonhole. So included we've got the four-step buttonhole foot, a blind hemming foot, a zipper foot, and a button sewing on foot. So these are all ones that are included with this machine. There's loads of different accessories you can get with this model um, as additional purchases. We've got three bobbins. There's probably one in the front as well. A seam ripper and a spare pack of needles to get us going. Let's pop those over here. So on the machine, we've got the standard zigzag foot attached as we do with most models. So if we just raise this up and release this little bit of protective paper. Now this machine is a front-loading machine so I'm just going to open this out and show you where the bobbin goes. So this trace, this called the accessory box, slides away and we've got then the free arm and if we drop this down we've also got our front-loading bobbin. So there should be a bobbin in here so we'll just take this out. Yeah we've got another bobbin in there so a total of four bobbins included with the machine. Drop that out because we'll wind that on. So just going through kind of the basics of the machine really, we've got our spool pins at the top here of which you have two and they kind of go, go in and out so for I suppose to put, stop them from getting bent so they're really easy to just pull up. We've got um, a system that is all coded by arrows so for showing exactly where to thread from the um, solid arrows or for the actual top threading and then the um, dotted arrows are for winding on the bobbin. We've got our tension dial, which is set at four, and I just will leave that exactly where it is for now. We've got our stitch selection dial, which corresponds to the stitches that are labelled there, and our stitch length dial, which um, you can just then adjust literally the length of the stitch, and we've got a little thing there showing what one for buttonholes, and then we can also access these S stitches, these stretch stitches here, we're using the red bit there. But we'll show you how to actually select those in a moment. And then we have our reverse lever for going backwards. This machine does also feature drop feed setting, so you can pull this and drop away the feed dogs for free motion sewing. The free motion foot isn't included, but it is something that you can do. You just put that back to the normal position, and then the feed dogs will then pop back up when you turn the wheel. There we go, they're free engaged. So let's give it a try. We'll wind on a bobbin and get started and see what we've got. 
So the reason you've got two score pins is for using a twin needle, but you don't have to. Obviously, you can use either one of these um, and just tidy the one away that you're not using at that moment in time. We'll pop our bobbin on here and literally follow these arrows. All we need to do is go around this tension disc and just tug it in, just around there once. And then I normally spin around here a few times just to get it started. And then as per the picture, you can attempt to get it through the little hole, but that can sometimes be a bit, ah, there we go, it worked. Okay, it worked that time. But if you do find it a struggle to get it through that tiny hole, just winding it round maybe five or six times um, is normally sufficient to actually get the uh, bobbin winder to, to click on, if you like. It's also got a little uh, picture here for us to pull out the balance wheel. So that's to declutch the um, needle so that the, this bar isn't going to be moving up and down when we're winding on a bobbin. So now when we press down on our foot pedal, oh, schoolboy error, <laughs> need to pop the bobbin over to the right onto the bobbin stopper and then it'll start spinning. So you can wind on as little or as much as you need. Um, once it does get to the very end, if you are winding on a full bobbin, it'll just kind of start to um, spin just a little bit and it'll just kind of, it'll, it's very clear when it's full. It may not pop over instantly, um, so just, just stop when it's, when it's making this kind of jerky noise, but that's all perfectly normal. I'll just wind on a little bit more. So release it over there and then you can pull the bobbin up. If you haven't got any scissors to hand like me right now, I'm just going to, uh, there's a little trimmer on the side. So I'm just going to trim it off using that and then we have our bobbin. In an ideal world, actually I will just grab those scissors from over here. Just to trim off that excess that's coming through the little hole there so it doesn't get trapped anywhere. And we have a bobbin, it's around nice and tight. You want it to be nice and smooth. You don't want it to be um, baggy or loose, or if it does look like that, then we haven't wound the bobbin on correctly and you may not have gone into the tension disc correctly here. So, um, and that can affect stitching. So do check that your bobbin is nice and firm. I'm gonna pop it into the case. So we want the thread to be coming off to the right hand side so that when it's in the bobbin case, it's spinning in a clockwise direction. So now that has gone through the little slit and through there, and it's now spinning in the right direction. And then pop that into the front and we'll hear it click. And then we've got, that's all in there nice and firm now. Now it's clicked into position. Threading the rest of the machine. We're just gonna follow these other arrows now, the solid arrows. So through this first guide, and we're doing this all with the foot raised, which we did do earlier on when it first came out of the box to release the little bit of paper. So we do need to make sure that the foot is raised. So that means mean the tension discs are open. Underneath, I'll just turn the wheel to pop up the take up link and then down. Now we've got two thread guides above the needle, one on the right and one on the left. That's for the twin needle really, so um, I'm just going to use the one on the left hand side as that's kind of closer to the centre of the needle. We've then got a needle threader built in. So now um, the take-up link's in the right position, the needle's in the highest position, this needle threader will, will work. So we're going to scoop around the little grey arm there, bring the needle threader all the way down and then it'll swing forward. This will present a little wire through the eye of the needle which we then hook into and then release that thread and it makes a loop out the back. And then pull this loop through and the needle's threaded. And again, you can just use a little trimmer at the side to take off any excess. To bring up our bobbin thread, I'm just going to turn the hand wheel towards the, and we'll see the thread getting scooped up there. once that's all up and 
in the correct position, it's best to just bring it through the center of the foot and out the back. We can then close the lid, pop our tray back on. Unless you're doing something where you require the free arm, then obviously leave it off. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to do some straight stitching and possibly some zigzag and we'll, we'll be on the flat so we don't need to actually have the free arm. So, I'll lower our foot and then have a look at our stitch selections because I did move this dial around because it was set to a very standard straight stitch before, kind of length of about two and a half. And it is on stitch A, which is the standard straight stitch. So at the minute we're looking at these ones at the top here because we're not on the red S, we're not uh, selecting any of these yet. We are just looking at these. So if we were to start a seam, for example, on the edge of the material. Oh, there we go, another um, schoolboy error. I'm so used to the automated machines now. The balance wheel, we do need to, because we pulled that out to do the bobbin winding, we do need to push that back in to re-engage the needle. <laughs> and of course, make sure there's enough thread in order to, that it doesn't come out the needle. <laughs> Just bring that down. That sometimes happens. We'll just re-thread the needle. Right, ready to go. And then we can finish off a seam using the reverse. And then you do just need to turn the wheel, try and turn it always towards you when raising it out of the fabric. And then we can pull that away and use the trimmer. So this machine can, even though it is, you know, a fairly basic model, we've only got a limited number of stitches and the four step buttonhole, it can still go through a multitude of fabrics and materials, even up to a kind of lightweight denim. So if you are just starting out and not sure if you're going to like sewing or anything like that. You know, it's a, not a, a huge investment, but it will get you through loads of different fabrics. Just bear in mind, though, that it does only have the, the four-step buttonhole, which is a little bit more complex to get used to. We could have a try with that. But uh, just to demonstrate, I mean, we've got this calico here. So now we've got one, two, three, four, six layers of calico, and that won't have any bother going through something like that. Quite happily. it's got good tension. The thing with tension is you probably won't need to adjust that um, much at all. Just it's normally going to be something to do with the thread or the needle so do bear that in mind and check those things before you start fiddling with the tension on. Um, that goes for practically every machine. If we were to select a different stitch just with your needle out of any fabric that you're working on it's turn, just turning this dial here and that's got like a sliding scale for the zigzag so you'll see B is a straight stitch offset over to the left and then C if you go all the way to C that's the widest zigzag that it'll do if you want a narrower zigzag then you can go somewhere in the middle and again adjust your length accordingly so if we were to have a standard zigzag which might be about because the maximum stitch width for this machine is five so a standard zigzag might be about four mil wide so that's going to be approximately there and about one and a one and a bit long. So let's just see how that one comes out. And I think that's a great thing about these starter machines. It gives you really good insight into how stitches work and what stitch width and length mean, because you have to know what they mean in order to get the correct finish you're looking for. And obviously if we leave the needle down and raise it, we can then pivot. Remember to turn it towards you. There we go, that's a kind of standard zigzag. So we'll just have a look at um, the buttonholer and clipping on the feet on and off on this model. So at the back of this um, the shank here, we've got a little lever and that just literally squeezes in 
and that foot will drop off. So it's all attached is on this little bar here. So if we get another foot, the button holder, um, which, yes, so it's got a number on it, number two, um, and that tells me which way around it needs to go. So I'm going to make sure I've got the two facing me. And I'm just going to lower the foot onto the bar, the foot holder even, onto the bar of the foot, and now that's attached. So if we were to do a buttonhole, we'll just turn the dial here. So we've got a four step system. It's all labeled, so you've got one is the first part of the buttonhole coming, I think it's coming forwards. Then we've got the bar tack, and then we have number three, which is going backwards, and then number four, which is the second bar tack. And we have to adjust each one of these, so. I'm just going to select our stitch length to um, the buttonhole stitch there, which is it's, so it's somewhere between zero and one. So it's a very small stitch length because we're going to want, want these zigzag stitches to be really close together to get a good buttonhole effect. Okay. Oh, Once again, make sure your needle has got plenty of thread. Oh, needle threader. marks on how long you need your buttonhole to be. So we'll just go with that being the right length. Turn it to number two and remember to do that with the needle out of the fabric. This is going to do the bar tack at the bottom. Probably want to do that maybe ten times ish. And then turn it to number three and then it'll now go backwards to complete the length of the buttonhole. And then when you just go nice and slowly so that when you see the end of your buttonhole, there we go, you can then turn it to number four and complete it there. There we have one buttonhole. So depending on the fabric you're using depends on how much stabiliser you might need or anything like that, or whether it's on a placket or anything. We've got a double layer of calico, so most things are pretty solid on here. So overall, I really love this little Burnett. It's, um, for the, the price, it is a really solid little machine and can do an awful lot, as we spoke about, and would be confident in selling it for all sorts of applications, whether that be just crafts or home, just, just making little bits for your house, soft furnishings even. As long as you've got the right needle, the right thread, it can do an awful lot and power through quite a few different fabrics. So more than happy for, for, that to, for it to be used for those kinds of applications. Um, if you would like, to, we've got loads of these available. So if it's something you were thinking of, I mean, now's the time, give us a call. Definitely, um, if you want to discuss anything about the machine or whether it would be right for you and what you want to do. Um, we're always on the phone and happy to assist. So um, give us a ring if you would like or leave a question below and we'll endeavour to get back to you as soon as possible. And um, thank you very much for watching our video and uh, we'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now. Hi again. So Frank's just reminded me that we didn't actually look at the stretch stitches, which is obviously something that people might need on these machines. So let's have a quick look at um, exactly how you get to these ones that we spoke about earlier. We'll just go through basically what all these stitches are. So we've got um, our straight stitches, as I said, the B and the C, that's the kind of scale of the zigzag. D being a, a three-step zigzag. Um, e is like a stretch blind hem. F is a normal blind hem and G is an overlocking stitch. And then down here, we've got our triple stitches. So these don't do it in a row. We'll show you what this one does. It does it on top of each other. So it looks like a top stitch. We've also then got a triple stitch zigzag, a honeycomb stitch, couple of overlocking stitches and then G, the one at the end is like a blanket stitch. So to access them, turn the dial all the way to the S and then treat it exactly the same. So on our selection wheel, if we go to A, we're going to get 
a triple stitch. Let's have a quick look at what this looks, is like. So it's like a top stitch, it's like a really kind of chunky triple stitch. So the thread has gone back and forward over there a few times, a couple, well, three times exactly, in order to create a more bolder stitch. And then if we wanted to, um, just to select the honeycomb one, we keep that on the S, and then we just select the stitch, or turn, take the needle up and take that to D. And then we'll have a honeycomb stitch. which in the past is traditionally used for smocking, but you can use it for all sorts of applications and craft decoration. So there we go. That's the stretch stitches and how you get to access them on the Bonnet 33. Bye again, for real this time. <laughs>